Last Night in Soho was directed by Edgar Wright. This is probably my most anticipated film of the year. It is his first uh, kind of foray into horror, into thrillers. Um, this is his sixth feature-length film, and uh, yeah, I cannot wait to talk about this movie. So to preface this, Edgar Wright is my favorite director. It's one of the most obvious things about me. I talk about his movies constantly. I own two of them right here. I don't know why I don't have the, uh, the Cornetto trilogy just yet. I'm not really sure why that is, but um, his movies are fantastic. I absolutely adore them. I, um, I'm i not overly obsessed like a lot of other people are with their favorite director. I'm not going to um, fight tooth and nail with someone saying that Baby Driver is the most amazing film in the entire world or Hot Fuzz is... Uh, one of the best comedy, you, you know what I mean? I'm not going to uh, do that, but I, I do have very strong loving opinions towards each of his movies. And he just checks off all the boxes I want out of a film. I, I like the style of filmmaking of music being heavily incorporated into each of your films. I love the, his editing style. I love his main characters for the most part. Um, I, I, I just adore his, his movies um, ever since I saw Scott Pilgrim back in seventh grade. Um, I just have loved all of them to death, and I was ex so, so extremely excited for Last Night in Soho. I first learned about it back in January, I don't know if I already said that, but um, man, I was excited for this thing. Um, once I knew it was actually happening, I was, I, I told Cam, we have to go, we have to go opening night, we have to go see this, and we did. We went opening night, which was awesome, and uh, a lot of discourse around this movie, a lot of um, mixed opinions. Uh, the Rotten Tomato score, I think, is 73%, 72%. Um, the Letterbox uh, average rating, I think, is 3.7. So um, I, those are positive numbers, technically. Um, but if you actually go in and reading the reviews, a lot of people don't enjoy this movie. A lot of people really don't like it. And um, I, I, I slightly understand what some of those people are saying. I, I, I kind of get where some people are coming from. But, unsurprisingly, I absolutely adored Last Night in Soho. I think this is my favorite movie of 2021 so far. I don't really see... I mean, I could see a couple movies beating it, honestly, if I'm being perfectly honest. But um, this movie was phenomenal. I don't want to really talk that many negatives on it, because I don't really have any. Last Night in Soho was brilliant. I, I, I thought it was incredible. So, th this is easily the most on Edgar Wright movie in his filmography. I already thought Baby Driver was kind of a big departure from Scott Pilgrim and from um, World's End that came before Baby Driver. Because um, even even if you even though um, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, Scott Pilgrim, and World's End are all very different movies and with very different distinct tones, you can tell they're Edgar Wright movies. That you, you can you can instantly go, yeah, that's an Edgar Wright movie. Um, it's the same way if you ever hear a Green Day song, like, that's a Green Day song. Uh, obviously, that's no no one else made this. But Baby Driver definitely was a step in more of a mainstream direction, if that makes any sense. I don't want to say he, he sold out or anything like that. No, no, no. It's just more, I don't know, it was a different style for him and definitely um, was a, a risk. Baby Driver was a pretty big risk for Edgar Wright. However, I thought it was a slam dunk. Adore that movie. My favorite movie of 2017. Mm, top two of my favorite movies of 2017. I adore Baby Driver. And um, Last Night in Soho is easily the least Edgar Wright movie out of his filmography. And But it still, it still has his stamp everywhere. This is the completely makes sense. This is almost exactly how I would imagine Edgar Wright would make a horror film. And I, I, I just thought it was brilliant. It's, it, it's, it's something that I've always wanted to see. I've always thought, man, if this guy would make a really psychological thriller or a really um, stylized horror movie, kind of like Suspiria or something like that, um, I, I, he could crush it. And he did. He crushed this thing. Um, for the color grading in this movie, the, 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 the different uses of lights and the cinematography and the visual aspect of this film is phenomenal. I'm going to talk about that first. The visual aspect of this movie kept me glued to the screen the entire time. The way that the dream world and the real world were so distinctly different in colors, the way the, the apartment was constantly lit up with the red and white sign, or the red and blue sign, 
um, the, the uses of pink in this thing, the editing in this movie is phenomenal, the way it feels like a dream the entire time, um, which I'll, I'll circle back to later, um, is, a, is a phenom like, so accurate. Um, I've never seen a movie portray dream, the, the sense of being in kind of a hazy dream, better than Last Night in Soho. I especially visually the the editing on in this thing is just incredible and I, I can't spoil it obviously um because I, I do want to spoil it kind of because that's where I can get a lot of my points across but I don't know I just thought ugh, the editing was incredible in this movie the cinematography especially was fantastic there were so many scenes where it was I was oh that's a little oh wow that's that's actually really great or um a scene that, that kind of seems a little, okay, he could have done this, he could have done that, and then he just, bam, he throws in a little bit of a, a great flair. He throws in um, a crane shot or a different, I don't know, just different things that just, I'm like, wow, that was that was the perfect decision right there. That that was exactly what needed to happen. It kept happening over and over and over again. And it, it's just, it's, it's who Edgar Wright is. He very much um, puts, I know he puts a lot of thought into the editing of his films. Obviously, if he doesn't do it himself, he has to has a bit has to have a big hand in them just because um, and the cinematography because it's 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 so his style and so distinctly his style it's it's very stylized. A lot of people um, criticize his movies as being more style over substance, which I guess is a fair criticism. But I think this is he does style the best out of anyone. Any any other director, he can do style ten times more than say someone like Quentin Tarantino or um, another big name director. that That's his thing and I, I, he does it just immaculately here. It, it's phenomenal. Uh, the tone of Last Night in Soho was also something that I thought was incredible. It really reminded me of older, um, very much Suspiria. Um, I got a lot of Suspiria vibes in this thing. And just the editing. Uh, the one shot in the trailer, this isn't really a spoiler, where there's a knife and you can see her eyes on the knife. I, I cannot tell you how much I love that shot. It is, it, it's just incredible. But um, just the tone of the movie and the way it handles the dream world and the real world and then them seeping into each other is fantastic. Without spoiling anything, that's kind of where the movie gets its horror from. And I, I thought it was it was pretty effectively creepy. Now, a lot of people said this movie wasn't scary for them. I, I, I don't necessarily think I was scared. I was thrilled and I was into it and it was creeping me out can't say it was the most scary thing in the world however i don't think the movie was really trying to be that scary i think a lot of people were going into it thinking oh this is going to be this is going to be terrifying this is going to be the most scary thing i've ever seen and it's not and i understand if you're disappointed by that aspect but for me personally i it wasn't a big deal i i kind of got what uh edgar wright was going for with that i i it, I, I found the movie to be pretty creepy um and effectively so um, but I, I just thought the tone was perfect all throughout the way, um, the 60s thing was going on, um, and what I really want to talk about is the dream, the dream sequences, the way how this entire movie feels very hazy, very much jumbled, very, um, all over the place with its narrative and stuff, I think that's perfect because it very accurately portrays a way a dream feels. A dream, the story is never cohesive in a dream. The, 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 the fine details you can never quite grasp. However, um, big details stick out. Very um, distinct moments kind of stick out to you, and they're very hazy. They, they don't make a lot of sense. And I think this movie just flawlessly portrays that. It could honestly just be bad screenwriting. It could be that the story is muddled, that the story... Um, needed a couple more drafts that it, it, it needed a little more hammering out however I don't think that's the case I, I, I want to go with um, it was done on purpose to make the movie feel a, like a confusing nightmare um, make the movie feel how the main character Ellie is feeling the entire the way of the movie and um, honestly I think that's great I thought it was a perfect idea to leave the movie mostly ambiguous to leave the movie mostly um, having, you having questions. Oh, why is this happening? Why is this happening? Why does it happen like that? And by going with the more style that like the tone, the, uh, um, just 
being the 60s, I feel like this the the this movie very just embraces that time period and runs with it. It just goes completely 11 uh, uh, turned up to 11 with that stuff. Um, again, I don't want to spoil what, what is happening, but it just completely goes into that. I was rambling a little bit there, needed a cut, needed to take a breath. Um, what I was trying to say is that this movie very much plunges, plunges itself into the 60s, it, um, especially London in the 60s. It has a bunch of bright lights, and it's about um, the, this girl wanting to become a performer, really um, wanting to have that glamorous life, that rich life, and, but then finding out the true wickedness and horror of that. I thought it was super effective. I, I pretty much ate up all of it. All of the, the scenes with uh, the, the music and the dancing and the uh, just everything having to do with the dream sequences here with Anna Taylor-Joy was, was phenomenal. Honestly, Edgar Wright could have made a whole movie about that one character in particular and all of the dream sequences and it would have been phenomenal. However, I do love the present day story with Ellie. I think Ellie is a very riveting character. I very much connected with her. I thought she was fully fleshed out. I thought she had a great personality. The lead actress, who I can't remember her name, who played her, was really, really good. She was just very relatable and very much a real human being going through this situation. And she felt, I don't know, you could feel a connection with her. You can really latch on her character and see why she's making the, decision, the decisions that she makes. Yes, is she a little flat sometimes? Maybe. But I feel like that's on purpose because she's very much supposed to be a vessel for the audience in some scenes. But then she's uh, she can shine in other scenes where um, her personality is coming out and her the you know uh, the main actress has to kind of show her chops a little more and she she kills it honestly. Um, I thought the setting was phenomenal. The, the London setting it really felt authentic. It really felt um, kind of grimy. Um, all of the constant like raining was really good. I just all of this movie had a perfect and cohesive aesthetic, and I think that it was phenomenal. It was just great. Um, so to kind of wrap up my thoughts here, Edgar Wright really made something special with Last Night in Soho. It perfectly encapsulates everything you want in a great Edgar Wright movie. Phenomenal editing, killer soundtrack, um, fast-paced movement. Very much style over substance in a very positive way. Great cinematography. However, adding a horror element that honestly really worked. I thought I, I was fully invested in this story in the the different twists and turns. I thought they were phenomenal. Um, the, the different moments where you're like, oh shit, that happened. I totally thought it was going to go this way. I thought they were fantastic. Everything having to do with this movie feeling like one long nightmare was just excellent so well portrayed and so accurate in my opinion um just I, I very much bought into this movie it is exactly the movie i wanted out of it and it just kind of checked boxes like yep jake would love this yep jake would love that yep jake would love that and i know i i, I guess i got suckered right into it whatever you can say i'm super biased whatever you want to call me personally for me this movie hit every box that i really wanted it to and was phenomenal. I had a great time seeing this thing. I, I love pretty much every aspect of Last Night in Soho. I don't, I don't have any negatives, and I want to go see it again. Um, Last Night in Soho gets an A+. Plus. This is my favorite movie of the year. Yeah. Okay, so this review is already going kind of long, but um, that was kind of my long, rambly, unscripted thoughts. Um, I might do a scripted review of this, just in case... I'm really not happy with how this ended up. And yes, I am wearing the same sweatshirt as in the last video. It got washed. I like the sweatshirt. I love the flyers. It's on again. But um, yeah, let, let me really let me know what you guys think of Last Night in Soho in the comments, please. I really want to know what your opinions on it. That you don't have to agree with me. Just be civil, obviously, but you don't have to agree with me. I really want to hear what you guys think because I'm very curious and want to have a kind of a discussion about it. So uh, yeah, that's all I really have. I will see you guys on... Halloween. See you later.